Right, uh, hello everyone. I'm Dr. Tom, the Attitude Doctor. Um, I was at the uh, dinner last night, speaker's dinner, and Andy Hamilton introduced me and says, here's Dr. Tom, he's crazy. And I'm like, well, it's not very really nice, the crazy doctor, but I think we all have to be crazy to be entrepreneurs sometimes. And I guess I'm more crazy over eight startups. And that's taken me all over the world. I've been hit by a tidal wave at two o'clock in the morning, survived, been stabbed, divorced, not by the same person, I may add. Um, <laughs> But, you know, I'm sure she had plenty of reason, too, because being married to an entrepreneur is not too much fun. You know, I'll buy this, I'll buy that. <laughs> and it's uh, not too flash. But one of the companies I started was called Dr. Global. And it was <clears throat> a little company and started off in Ocado, a village of 400 people. And we managed to raise $3 million worth of venture capital. We had 20 staff working for us. <coughs> Excuse me. And 20, sort of the week after I got the venture capital and the $3 million, my wife left, right? So I got divorced. So I wasn't very, you know, I wasn't very happy. I didn't predict that. It wasn't in my business plan. Certainly not my marketing plan. <laughs> but, you know, a serious point. We got the three million. I thought, well, I keep telling her, well, you know, we're going gonna, gonna to relax. We're going to relax. We've made it. But when we got the three million, what we found out was, yeah, you've got to really work hard because you've got to prove that it works, right? So what happened was I thought, I'll put someone else in charge of the company and I'll stay home, stay home and try and save my family. That didn't work. And I lost my family, lost my company, right? So then I got quite depressed. And, you know, your doctor, the Taranaki rugby team, is, you know, maybe not a good look. And, uh, and I got really depressed. And then I was going, I've lost my family, I've lost my family. And now I've lost my company. And I thought, well, hang on. And I've let the investors down. And I thought, well, hang on. That, that thought's not true. I've lost my family. I've still got a really great family. But it's just one less than I budgeted on. And I've got heaps more housework, right? <laughs> so, so I outsourced the housework. I was never good at that anyway. And I thought, God, you know, there's, a, there's an idea. And I started working with how my emotions and my thought process were connected. And I thought, there's an, there's an idea. Maybe there's a business. So I need to write a business plan. So uh, I needed to uh, write a couple of books because it was really hard. And I ended up in 12 countries. And uh, I needed to go and do some stand-up comedy. That was the other part of the business plan from being miserable, suicidal, and antidepressants in six weeks to go and do some stand-up. So I ended up touring with Mike <laughs> King. And then I thought, I need to get some clients, need people to pay. So I rang up, and anyway, it's gone. That was 10 years ago, and we've got over 500 now, so we're trained Google, Microsoft, all those sort of things. And, but from day one, I wanted to, to emotionally audit them and see where their emotions were and link it all together. And it's been a great sort of ride with lots of challenges. And I couldn't have done it with, on my own, and I've got professors of psychiatry and psychologists through the University of Auckland, Faculty of Education, helping me. So we've, we've gathered data on 10,000 people, including maybe some of you in the audience, and uh, what gets up your nose, what stresses you out in a business perspective. So we call it emotional fitness. So I just want to ask, think about over the last month, how much time have you been stressed, frustrated, or anxious? You know, 30%, 90%, what percentage of time? Shouldn't take you long. In 10 years, so then we say it was 30%, and that's actually the average um, we've, of all these companies when we benchmark people. 30% of the time, people feel stressed. 42% of the time, frustration. When you look back in 10 years, are you going to go, wow, I'm so stoked. I spent three years of my life being stressed or frustrated, right? Well, hopefully not. It's a massive load of product loss of productivity. You add that up right across everyone in your uh, organization. So what we needed was some scale and build a medicine, right? So we built an online program, an e-course, um, with a whole set of tools around how to manage your emotional response. And in two minutes or less, I'll give you a couple of tools that will reduce your stress by 30%. And it's been picked up by uh, Rupert Murdoch's outfit, and 550,000 users in their platform um, have access to our product. So it gets your scale going through the web. Three tools, cognitive switching, emotional algebra, and attitude profiling, we've all designed, um, designed to do one thing, and that's disengage your grumpy unit. Now that's the amygdala. You may not know you've got one. Um, you may think you've married one or have employed a few. Well, you, <laughs> they've married one, but it's the amygdala, and it's scanning, looking for threat and uncertainty. Right? Mine could be going off right now and send me all these signals. You know, but I'm going. Well, I'm not anxious. I'm really excited. Right? It's the same physical response. So I've got fast pulse, dry mouth, blurred vision, slightly incontinent. But I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm choosing to be excited. Right? So my business is going around disengaging grumpy units. Now. What we've done, and the great thing about partnering with academics and fellow researchers, you know, we've attracted people from the US, they've worked with Navy SEALs, and just quickly I want to talk to you for 60 seconds about heart rate variability. So what we do is we found a physiological measure for um, measuring um, stress, physiological stress. Now one of those tools before is called cognitive switching, and I'll give you one cognitive switch. It's called crisis equals opportunity. The more you say crisis and equals opportunity, you're going to a different part of your brain, right? and you switch on your right prefrontal cortex, you switch off your amygdala. 
And I don't have time to go through that now, but just believe me, that's the science behind it. And I can show you, put on a monitor, and we can improve um, the way you think. It improves you the way you feel, and it improves your heart rate variability, and you'll perform better. Got evidence. One of the big problems, so go around saying crisis equals opportunity, crisis equals opportunity. You switch on your right prefrontal cortex. Um, this, we moan so much, we've developed a profiling system, and do merchants, you know them, you can recognize them, diagnose them, go to them and say, have a nice day, and they'll go, sorry, we've made other plans. And even, <laughs> even Sir Ed must have woken up one day and gone, I can't be bothered climbing anything, I just want to, oh, I know, I'll take a tractor. But just, it's a massive thing, just go around, get the people, just don't moan. So we create no moan zones, it's a great thing, it works. If just two of you in your organization don't moan and use cognitive switching, it's a great thing. If the rest of you do it, it becomes exponential. Metcalf's law of networks, that's how we get massive change in organizations. That's how we'll change the culture. That's how we can change our country. And that's how we can grow a great country. And it works. And we've got evidence to show that it does. You know, I'm Dr. Tom from the Institute of Healthy Thinking. We're trying to change your world uh, one thought at a time. And, you know, thanks for listening. And thanks for all the people who have supported us, like the BNZ and NZTE. And um, one thing you can't do um, if you go overseas is get a power, shoot a kingfish, and sit under a cowrie tree. So I'm proud to still be here and working in a hospital. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>